So let's take a few minutes and look at VMware Workstation. Now, when we're looking at desktop virtualization platforms, there are a bunch of them out there. We've already looked at Hyper-V a little bit. We've looked at Oracle VirtualBox. This is VMware Workstation. Uh, Workstation Pro is a little more expensive. In fact, Oracle's free. VMware Workstation is not. It's about 200 bucks. Um, it is a fairly full featured platform, however, and there's some really nice things about it. You can go to VMware's website and download a 30 day evaluation copy. And that's what I'm looking at right here. Okay. So let's take a look at it. We have across the top here, close that tab because I don't need that. We have across the top here tabs for home and then for virtual machines. Now, when you first open it up, you're not going to have any virtual machines, so you'll just have that home tab. And like you see, I can close the tabs whenever I want. From the home tab, it gives us our, when our evaluation period ends, if we have a trial, we can get a license and enter a license key. We also have an option to create a virtual machine. This makes one brand new. Open a virtual machine. That's if we've already have one from another system that we want to open up here now and connect to a remote server, which is nice because it allows us to manage things from across the network. All right, let's take a look at some of our settings for the system itself before we dive into virtual, uh, virtual machine settings. So I'm going to go to file and from here I can create a new virtual machine, create a new window, scan for virtual machines, see if I can find any, connect to a server. And if I have a virtual machine selected, I can export it to an OVF file so I can move it somewhere else pretty easily. And then I have the option to map virtual disks here, which will let me map from a or map a file name to a specific drive letter. So um, go ahead and close that. Under edit, we have our virtual network editor, which is where we can set up virtual networks, which opened up on the wrong screen. So I'm gonna drag it over. And I've got a couple of virtual networks already defined, a host only and a NAT network. And you can see the settings form. You actually can't make any changes unless you come here and click change settings. And then that's gonna require administrative permissions. You can go ahead and apply to my reply to my UAC and then drag this back over because it moved it again. And now I can add new virtual networks. I can remove networks. This is how I could define what I want. It's kind of like the virtual switch manager in um, Hyper-V, except that it has a few more options. So I can create multiple new virtual networks. You can see here, I can have quite a few of them going on. Now I don't need any of those. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of that. But if this is something that we're using on a regular basis, that might be something you might wanna look at doing is doing multiple virtual networks to handle your virtual machines in different ways. Again, this though is designed for a workstation, not a data center environment. So we gotta think about how many virtual machines are really we really gonna be running here. All right, so I also have my preferences here. And so I have preferences for my workspace and remember open tabs between sessions, keep VMs running after workstation closes, enable all shared folders by default, handful of other settings here, what to do with screenshots, um, and then input options, grab keyboard and mouse, uh, automatically grab and ungrab the mouse if needed hotkeys that you can use for your system display settings. Do we want to auto fit to the window, auto fit guest? Do we want to set a lighter dark color scheme uh, for the menu and taskbar? Do we want to use single button for, well, you get the idea. Now, Unity is something that it'll do that's really interesting. Unity will let you open up an application inside a virtual machine like it's running on your local machine. So it's actually running inside the VM, but you don't see that. It seems like it's running on your local machine. So that can be really useful if you have, let's say, Windows 10, Windows 11, and you have an application that has to run under an older version of Windows. You can use VMware Workstation, create a virtual machine, install that application, but then using Unity, make it look like it's running on the local machine. So it just makes it a little easier to work with. We have options for what to do with USBs. Uh, ask me what to do, connect to the host, uh, connect to the foreground virtual machine. Updates, how do we want to check for software updates? Do we want to join their feedback program? How much RAM should the system be able to reserve for running virtual machines? Let's adjust that here. 
uh, set the priority. So default process priority, and then whether to take snapshots in the background or in the foreground. And then finally devices. So do we want to enable virtual printing, which in order to do that, that's another administrative function here. And then removable machine. Do we want to disable auto run on the host when a virtual machine is running? So these are all kind of your global configuration settings to determine how VMware Workstation is going to run for you. So you can see it's really highly customizable and gives you a lot of options under your view menu well normal full screen view unity which by the way you have to have a virtual machine running and selected for you to be able to do that that's why it's grayed out for the vm we can look at power removable devices for the vm a pause grab input snapshot capture screen manage or install vmware tools or look at settings and i don't have any vm selected we'll look at this in a minute uh, with the VM selected and then tabs and your help information. And then across the top here, a bunch of shortcuts dealing with power and send control all delete and dealing with snapshots. All right, so I'm gonna select a virtual machine and we're gonna look at some virtual machine settings. And then we're gonna come back and look at how we can create a virtual machine. So now that I have this selected, if I go to VM, notice I have these options are available now. Power, snapshot, manage, which will let me clone, upload, change hardware compatibility, clean up the disks, delete from the disk, look at permissions, or manage my settings. Let's go ahead and look at our settings. And this first one is hardware. So you'll see our memory adjustable here, number of processors, number of processor cores, whether we want to enable virtualization engines for it, the hard disk, what it's emulating, in this case, NVMe. And then we have some disk utilities to map to a local volume, defragment, expand the disk compa capacity, compact and reclaim unused disk space. So, and then some advanced options here for your disks as well. So what it's, uh, what device it's node is connected to. And this will change depending on whether you're running NVMe or something else. And then whether you're running independent, persistent or non-persistent connections. Okay. Under our CDs, connect to power on, whether it's connected or not, use a physical device, use an ISO image, pretty standard, straightforward. Network adapter. So remember when we were looking at specific virtual networks, if we wanted to create virtual networks and use a specific network, we would do that here. However, we have three options predefined. Host only, which is private network shared with the host, nobody else. NAT, use the host IP address or bridge, which is to connect directly to the physical network. And then we can choose to replicate the physical network connection state or not if we want to. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this as NAT for the moment. In fact, I'm not gonna save these changes anyway. Uh, USB controller, we can set compatibility, share Bluetooth, show all USB input devices. Sound card is pretty straightforward, whether it connect, is automatically connect or, or whether it's connected right now, connect to power on, use specific devices. Printer is currently disabled. Remember, we had to go into preferences, and you saw under preferences where hey, we had to globally enable printing, and that does take administrative action or administrative permissions. And then our display, where we can accelerate 3D graphics, specify the number of monitors, so on and so forth. Okay, um, under options, so those are your hardware settings. We also have settings here under options. So the name, the guest operating system, the working directory, the enhanced keyboard if we want to use it, power options, enter full screen after powering on. By default, it's not going to go full screen. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Close after powering off, report the battery information, and then power controls. What do each one of these do? Shared folders if we're using them. Remember, that's to allow us to basically create a network shared folder between the host and the um and the guest operating system. So we can move files back and forth or share data. Snapshots, when powering off, do we want to revert to a snapshot, take a new snapshot, ask, or just shut it off. Auto protect, we can enable auto protect and have it take snapshots automatically, or we can disable that so it doesn't automatically take snapshots. Guest isolation, we can choose to enable or disable, drag and drop and copy and paste.
which requires VMware tools to be installed, by the way. Uh, access control, do we want to encrypt access control or not? VMware tools, do we want to uh, update manually, automatically update, or use application default? And then we can choose to synchronize guest time with the host or not. VNC connections, Unity settings, if we're going to be using that, our appliance view, auto log on if our system supports that. And then under advanced, we have process priorities, some other general settings here, disable memory page testing, log virtual machines progress periodically, clean up disks after shutting down the virtual machine. And then we can change the firmware type from either UFI or between either UFI or BIOS. So those are all of our settings. Now, one of the things I kind of like about this, by the way, VMware, I think is a great platform. I have occasionally had problems with it being a little picky on whether it wanted to run or not. So that's something you may run into. Um, on this machine, I had a hard time getting it to run virtual machines. However, on other systems, it works just fine. Now, one of the things I do like about this, and I like this quite a bit, is when I go to start a virtual machine, it actually starts it within this little window right here. And then I can make that larger, smaller, do whatever I want to with it. But it actually runs it within that little window. And so I have my tabs across here and I can tab between my different virtual machines very easily. And I think that actually addresses one of the problems we sometimes have with virtual machines. And that is we sometimes forget which machine we're on. And so what it does, this keeping it inside this window, even if we maximize this window, by keeping it within this window, it makes it very easy for us to switch back and forth between virtual machines to remember which virtual machines we're on. I'm going to go ahead and power this thing off. And to um, and to make sure that there is a distinction between our virtual machine and our host. And I have seen several times people in another uh, platform will take and maximize their guest operating system, and then they'll lose track of am I in the guest or am I in the host and they end up doing something on the wrong system and and this is just a nice way of dealing with that so this is something I actually really kind of like you can by the way close the library here if you want that goes away um, and then you just don't see that library again until you bring it back okay um I also wanted to show you how to do a creative virtual machine because this does a couple of things. VMware does a couple of things that are pretty nice. So I'm going to do create a virtual machine and I can do a typical or a custom. We'll do custom to show some of the other little details of this. And I get to choose this first option is choose my hardware compatibility. So what I can do is I can roll this back to previous versions of workstation or esxi and the idea here being if i created a virtual machine here might i want to move it somewhere else so if i'm running data center virtualization with vmware and esxi i can create my virtual machine here and say all right i want to make this compatible with esxi 7 then i can copy it over to my data center servers and i can run it there um, if i have somebody else who's running a virtual or running vmware workstations a little bit Bit older. I might want to go back and use a previous version so that I have the ability to move my virtual machine over to their system. That's what this is about. So I'm going to click next and then I can choose to, uh, I can use an installer disk, I can use a disk image, or I can choose to install the operating system later. Now here in my disk image, I have server uh, or server 2019 ISO. And so VMware Workstation then looks at uh, that operating system and says, hey, I can automate the install with this. Now, if you want to manually control the install, you need to say, I will install an operating system later. But if you want to do that automatic install, you, or the easy install is what they call it, I can select this here. And so what happens when I do that is it's going to then ask me some things for my Windows. So product key, if I want to use one, which version I want to install, what my full name is, what my password's going to be. Log on automatically if I want. 
And then, yeah, I know I didn't put in license key. And then when I go to create it, what will happen is it will do that automatic install for me. And it'll take all the information I have and it'll fill it in. So basically it happens without me having to walk through the installation process. It just does it. Choose the firmware type that I want, BIOS or uh, UEFI and secure boot if I want it. Number of processors, number of processor cores I can adjust here. Amount of memory I can adjust here. Machine or network type. Let me go ahead and use bridge networking for this one. Click next. Not going to use it anyway. Uh, what type of SCSI controller I want. So I can use bus logic, LSI, LSI logic, SAS, or para virtualized SCSI. Notice, by the way, that not all of these are supported for every operating system. So in this case, I am running, um, or I'm going to be running Windows Server 2019. So this is the one that's recommended and it says the others aren't supported. So I'm gonna click next and then I get to choose which disk type I want. Do I want this to emulate IDE, SCSI, SATA, or NVMe? And again, it tells you which one's recommended. So I'm going to click next and then I can choose to create a virtual disk, new virtual disk, use an existing virtual disk. And this is something that VMware does that some of the others don't is I can choose to use a physical disk. So to do this, I have to have a physical disk in my system that I'm not using for anything else. And it does make it, by the way, a little harder to move this virtual machine because it's now associated with a physical disk instead of a virtual disk file but it does give you a little bit of a performance boost. So if I wanted to put another hard drive, physical hard drive in my system, I could say, hey, use this physical disk rather than using a virtual disk file and then specify the disk and the virtual machine would use that. So I'm gonna create a new virtual disk file, set my size, allocate the space now, store as a single file. And this is something that's kind of nice. It's split virtual disk into multiple files. Now, if you do that, it's actually going to run a little bit slower. It's a little harder for uh, that to function. It has to work a little bit more if it's working with multiple files. But what it does is it splits them into files of no more than two gigabytes. And the reason that you do that is if you are going to move this virtual machine to another physical computer and you're using a flash drive or something like that that's formatted with FAT32, it will only allow two gigs as a maximum file size. So I've had issues where I've had a student, they have 120 gigabyte uh, flash drive. They try to copy over a virtual machine file. It says, I can't, you don't have enough room on your hard drive or on your destination device. They're thinking, are you kidding me? I've got, you know, 128 gigabytes free and you're sitting here with a 10 gigabyte file. Why won't it fit? It won't fit because it's formatted as FAT32, which has that two gigabyte file size limit. So your option then is to format it as in TFS. But uh, this option here to split it into multiple files addresses that particular issue as well. If you need it left formatted at FAT32, you can have your uh, have VMware do this as multiple virtual files or multiple files, and then it'll copy over every one of them at two gigs a piece. So if you got 50 gigs of storage space, you're looking at 25 two gig files to make up the hard drive. I'm gonna go ahead and do this as a single file and click next. And then what's the name of it? Next, and then I can power on. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off because VMware and my hardware don't get along here and customize hardware if we want to. And when I'm done, I just click finish. And that is now going to add this. And you see, I now have a, another tab up here. So now I can move back and forth between all of my virtual machines pretty easily. All right, there we go. That is VMware. Uh, one other thing, uh, I can choose to manage my VM, which gives me the option to, and we looked at this close, upload, or delete from disk. And so I'm going to go ahead and delete this from disk. And it says it's going to delete the virtual machine. And we're going to say yes. And away it goes. All right, there we go. That gives you a real quick overview of VMware Workstation Pro. Now, just to remind you, you can download a trial copy of it. It is a 30-day evaluation. 
it's fully featured, which means you can do, I mean, as long as you can get it to work on your hardware, um, you can, uh, you can do everything for 30 days. And then if you want to continue using it, you just have to go out, buy a license key and apply that license key and you're all set. Okay. There you go. I hope it was helpful.